Hey, welcome to this short design tutorial. We are going to be talking about how to take charge of your design using Canva. My name is Kimunya. I'm a leadership coach, communication and branding specialist, and author. And you can find more of my work at leadbychoice.co. This tutorial was inspired by a short challenge that I participated in. And one of the participants was keen to know how I create my designs. It all began with my blog. I just did not have the time to use Adobe Illustrator, which is uh, quite a complex tool, and I did not have enough resources to hire a designer. So I happened to come across Canva.com and it has really helped the way I interact with my, my designs. But before we go into design itself, the question is, where does it start? Because I think we have the pyramid inverted a bit. Whenever we think about designing, we immediately go to the tool or think about the tool that you're going to use to design. But I want to propose to you that design actually starts somewhere else and it starts in the mind. And I want to share with you the five key areas that you need to concentrate on even before you think about the tool that you're going to use. And I call this the 80% that is going to help you win a design. The actual tool or the actual outcome only constitutes about 20% of your overall designs. And the first thing is, what is the message that you're trying to pass across to your audience? It is very important for you to have this very clear in your mind, even before you think about the design, the design process. The second is, why is this message important to your audience and even to yourself? What is the tone of the message? Is it inspiring? Is it thought-provoking? Because this is actually going to determine how your design is going to end up looking like. The fourth aspect of design is what do you want your audience, your readers, your viewers to feel? What emotions do you want to evoke in them? The last step is what action do you want them to take with the message that you are designing for? So these are the five key areas where you win at design. What is your message? Why is it important? What tone is that message going to take? What do you want your audience to feel? And finally, what action do you want them to take? And it's now time for us to head out to play. And there are three key areas that are cri three critical steps that I take. The first one is that I look out for a quarter ball. What do I mean by a quarter ball? A quarter ball is a hook that is going to draw my audience into my message. And this could be a, small, a short piece of text from what I'm writing or what the message I want to portray, or I could actually borrow from some authorities, some quotes from, and, and there are very many sources you can actually get uh, very many quotes uh, online. So, but the key, the key here is that that quote must resonate with the message that you want to pass across. The second step, since I've already sorted out my design in my mind, I have my quotable, is that now I will look out or select an image or a photo that I can use to accompany my quotable. And this is, a, this is an image or a photo that I, could have, I, I may have taken myself or a friend has sent me, but I have a, a, a number of uh, uh, key free resources that uh, I use is photopin.com the other one is unsplash.com, but there are quite a number of uh, uh, sources that you can actually use um, for your images. But the one key thing that I also want to mention here is that at any one point, whenever you use an image or a photo, it is important for you to attribute the source. The next step is for me to head over to canva.com to start creating that design. This is the home screen when I log into canva.com. Uh, if you don't have a Canva account, you can just head over to canva.com and create a free account. And uh, once you, you log into your account, this is an interface that is actually going to, and you're going to encounter. It has two main panels. The one on the left is where you have your tools or design controls. And you have a panel on your right, which shows you what you are working on. Now you will notice that I have quite a number of designs already. Now there are two main areas. The first is that green button on your on, on your left. And the, the, the green button is just basically tells you to create a design. You can either use the pre-formatted template uh, that Canva offers you, or you can use custom dimensions if 
what you want to create is uh, not um, within the Canva templates. So for example, if you want to uh, create a, a, a blog header that's maybe uh, 1200 pixels uh, by 100 pixels wide, then this you can use this dimension and what, it, you know, what is going to happen is that it's going to give you the opportunity to enter the, the dimensions. But for the sake of this tutorial, we are going to look at the uh, Canva uh, templates. And I'll take you quick, quickly through the different aspects of uh, the design process. Now, there are some popular uh, templates that are already here, but if you click on this uh, plus button here, what it's going to do is that it's going to uh, populate uh, for you the various templates that are already existing in Canva. And you have the popular designs appearing at the top of this panel. You have your social media posts. You have documents. And uh, this is very nice, important for us to uh, also look at or to remember that you can actually create uh, some documents using Canva. Um, they even have a new template for creation of magazines or um, you can adapt it for a newsletter. Blogging and ebooks. Uh, you can actually create uh, ebooks using, using Canva. It's a bit of a longer process, but if you do not have uh, the ability to design one yourself or you do not have the resources to hire a designer, this is a good place for you, uh, for you to start. Blog titles, this is my most favorite because this is my, uh, the template that I use the most uh, for uh, images for my blog. You have marketing materials from posters all the way to gift certificates. And you can even create uh, your business card designs uh, using Canva. Social media headers is another category. You can do uh, event postcards, uh, invitations and all. And even some ads, uh, mm -hmm. for example, if you want to run a Facebook ad, you actually have a template that you can use to create your Facebook ad. So for you to create design, as I mentioned earlier, you just hit the create a design button. Here we are to create our new design. And uh, the design I want to create is a blog title. So I will click on that. It'll open a new window for you. And now you see on the, something changes. On the left hand side, you have a few tabs that have now appeared. Now we are on the layouts tab, which is what is going to govern our right hand uh, panel right there. That's where our design is actually going to reside. As you can see, it's just a white background. There's nothing in it. And what I, I did not mention a little earlier is that you can actually add new pages to your design and you will see how that interacts with everything a little later. So if you could just look at the tabs on your left, which is where most of your controlling will happen, you can actually search from within Canva for, for images that they have. Um, most of the images are for sale by Canva, uh, that's a caveat, and um, um, most of the images are actually um, at all like each. Let's say, for example, for uh, argument sake, let's search and see if we can get any image that falls under the category Canva. And uh, there we are. You have a Canva uh, logo uh, available for free. And you can see now that the images they have, they have a price tag to them. However, there's some few, there's some images also that are available for free use. And that one is usually clearly indicated. But as you can see, most of the images are available for purchase from Canva for a dollar. Then you have your layouts, of course. You have the elements tab, which now gives you other um, elements like shapes, lines, illustrations that you may want to incorporate into your design. There's a text tab, which uh, gives you some basic headers here and text, but you also have some pre-formatted uh, styles that you can incorporate into your design. For example, if you want to do, right, we are writing about bedtime stories or fairy stories or something like that, if you click on that text design right there, it will appear on your design panel on your right. And you can choose to actually, um, and by the way, all these are editable, so you can enter whatever text that you want uh, into those preformatted designs. Then you have the background tab, which is pretty self-explanatory. And uh, basically what it does is that it gives you various uh, background uh, template designs that you can use. Um, and it's just a click away and it adds the background uh, for you. 
then this is where we're going to work on today um, uploads I prefer to search for my own images uh, and then upload them into Canva and use them for design now I mentioned earlier that there are two stock photo websites that I, 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 I'm fond of using and one of them is photopin.com and the other one is unsplash.com now under unsplash.com fortunately they, at the very uh, on their landing page they tell you that their, their photos are free do whatever you want uh, high resolution but as you notice there is the attribution aspect that I talked about it is important for you to attribute where you have gotten or where you have downloaded your, your, your photos the photos that you're using for your designs so you can uh, link back provide a link back to for example unsplash.com I will show you how that happens with um, photobeaten.com as we create our new design so let's go back to the layouts and uh, under the layouts you can scroll down and select uh, a template that you want to start off from I consider this as a building block a template and then I can adapt it to whatever look and feel I want it to have so I will scroll down and if you have noticed also under the templates there's some which have a dollar sign to them if you mouse over and this means that you will have to pay for that specific template at the download when you're downloading your design all the others have a free tab attached to them for the sake of uh, this design I'm going to choose this free one right here and all I need to do is click on it and that template actually uh, moves over to the, your left side of, of, of the panel so that is the starting point of today's um, my design today and the design that I want to do today is um, I'm looking at uh, publishing a, a blog post that uh, looks at leadership and, and, and sharing and uh, it has an analogy about a farmer who shares the best seed with his uh, neighboring farmers because if he if the neighboring farmers are cultivating poor quality crop then what what is going to happen is that there's going to be cross-pollination and that's going to contaminate um, his 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 harvest or his crop so he chooses this farmer chooses to share with uh, with the, the quality seed with his farmers and that way he grows as he grows um, his yield He's also growing with uh, with 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 his um, neighboring farmers, and this is just an analogy of what leadership is. You don't grow alone. A leader grows with other leaders. He builds other leaders around him. So what I did is that I went to uh, photopin.com and just um, searched for images, and uh, the the term I added here was African maize farmer, and these are some of the images that I managed to get. And I particularly like that image right there with this farmer who's beaming with joy looking at his his wonderful crop so this is an image that i want us to use so what i will do is on on uh, photopin.com you have that tab right there get photo you will get um uh this panel popping up and you can download that image in various sizes i want a 500 pixels by 367 pixels image so i will go ahead and download that but before I download that, you will see here that Photopin have already um, given you uh, HTML, for example, for attribution. And all you will need to do, if you're if you're putting out this up on your on your blog or on your website, is that you're just going to copy that script right there, that HTML script, and just paste it onto your 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 your, your platform. And basically, it's going to attribute it directly back to Photopin. So they have made your life a little a little easier. So it's important for you to remember that. But for now, let's just download this image and I'm going to uh, save the link as an image and that should share it, uh, save it to my hard disk. I'm going to rename this image uh, to Pharma. I think we have our image uh, right there. So we will head back to Canva and uh, remember the, the template that we've already saved? I don't really need this image here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to delete it. Um, and there are two ways of, of deleting that image. You can either use the, um, the delete button right, right in Canva, or you can just hit your backspace, and that will also delete that image.
Now the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to upload that image. There are two ways of uploading the image. I can either hit that green button with upload your images right there or I will come to my uh, image on my hard disk. I will click on that image and drag it onto the active Canva window and you can see this upload icon here appears which means that you're ready to upload that image and I will just drop that image uh, onto that window and what happens is that it will appear on my left hand panel right here. If I click on that image it now is transferred onto my design panel and now this is where we get to start the design work. There was some text previously from the template and you cannot see it uh, overlaying this image and this is because the template actually has layers. It has a, each, each element is a layer by itself. So I need to make sure that this image goes all the way to the back of um, my canvas. And as, you, as I'm doing that you can see all the text now starts to pop up. The next thing I'll, I'm going to do is adjust my image to fit the Canva canvas like that and I can always adjust the image to suit which parts of that image I want to appear. We have one problem and the problem is that the text is competing with the image or with the photo. So I will need to figure out what to do with this text so that it is also visible but at the same time it plays well with the image. There are various ways of doing this. One is that I can change the font. The other is that I can actually move the text and all this text you know you can actually move it across the, the canvas it is all independent of each other as you can see then the other thing i can do so that i can be able to manipulate the text properly select all the text and i can be able to format that text and whenever you click on an element a text element you will get this menu popping up from this menu i can actually change the color of the text i can change the font size and also the font type uh, right there but for now, all I just need to do first is to change the font color so that I, it, it is more visible for design. I can change, I, I can either bold the text, I can convert it into italics or uppercase, whatever you want, center it. So for, for now, I just need the text in black so that I can uh, be able to look at it and, uh, and be able to edit it. Now, quotable that I've selected for this specific design is one for all and all for one and all for one I'm going to put it in this um, text box, box here all for one and there we are and here I can actually come in and change the font font size I'll make it a little uh, bigger to match the one that's uh, at the top uh, let's take it down to font 24 and there we are and uh, that one I think I'll, I'll just leave it. Font 25, uh, align left. I'll also align this one to the left so that you can be able to mani manipulate them a little better. And there we are. So we have our basic text. And there are a few other elements right here that I will deal with um, a little later. But we are still having a little competition between the image and the text. And that is where I will use a shape element so i will come into the shape elements uh in this case i just want to select a rectangle i want to use this as a background overlay for the text that are uh, the text right here that i've already created so i can you know just use a placeholder to, to adjust the size and i can actually now change the composition or the characteristics of this uh, specific element uh, in this case i wanted to make it more transparent and I'll maybe reduce the transparency and say 50%. And what that does is that there's an interplay. I can still see part of the image in the background, but what it's going to do is that it's going to help pop up the text that I have created. If you notice, this element is at the very front or it's a top layer on this canvas. So I want to take it one step or two steps back so that the text that I had created here now overlays it. And if you notice what happens, is that now the text pops up and it's more visible and I can actually uh, increase the width of that specific uh, element. I will move the text to one side. There we are, we have our basic template. Now there's an element here that we do not need. We can delete, we can delete that and I can actually now work on this and move it a little lower just to make it look a little 
a bit more professional. There's a text element that I needed to use, which is right at the back here. And what I'm, I'm going to do is change the color of that specific element so that it's visible and I don't lose it out. Now, why am I tinkering around with that specific element? I'm, I'm going to use this image for my blog post. And what I do for all my images is that I will include my blog URL, www.leadbychoice.co. Why do I do this? The moment I publish my blog post, I'm going to share it from social media uh, to my newsletter. And this image, remember we mentioned that this is what is going to be the anchor to pull in your readers or your audience. And technically, we are done with the design. We can tinker around with the, with the fonts, for example, as I said, and maybe I just want to make that one to look a little more fancy, and I might just decide to maybe use that font, uh, Sacramento. And you can play around with all these fonts until uh, you find one that is, or, or, or a, a series of, of fonts that work well for you. So technically, the design is, is, is done and all that is remaining right now is just basically aesthetics. Before you go to the download button, always remember to save and that is going to be the title of your design. You can actually now hit the download button and you get a, a number of download options. One is a JPEG for the web, a high quality PNG, um, a standard PDF or a print PDF and if you had created a number of pages for your design, for example, if you were just to populate, what will happen is that you can actually choose which range of pages you want to download. What I want is an image for the web. Uh, remember, if you had used any Canva elements, it, you're going to be charged a dollar per piece. I have my image, my blog image uh, design ready for use. And if you can just preview that design, there we are. The design is ready for use on my blog. Once your design is ready, you can immediately share it uh, on Facebook and, and Twitter or email it to yourself. I hope this has been useful. And remember that design fast starts in your mind. That forms about 80% of your design problems. Even if you're working with a designer, that designer will work off the template that is in your mind. So you have to be very clear about what message you're passing across, why it is important, the tone of that message, what you want your audience to feel, and finally, what action you want them to take. So I hope this has been a useful uh, tutorial for you. If you have any questions or comments, you know, just share them uh, below this, this video. And I'm going to share with you the links to some of the uh, resources that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you for hanging out with me and I uh, hope to see you in other tutorials around leadership, communication, and branding. Take care and enjoy your designs.